Check it out. What's going on, gangs? It's Gregory Scott here. So welcome to another edition of How to Start Calisthenics, Go Beast Mode, and Make Ultimate Gains. I'm your host, Gregory Scott, and today we have a very special, very gainful video for you. So in the last two weeks' videos, we covered the importance of mastering the basics in calisthenics and building that strong foundation. And then the second week, we covered supersets, circuits, single sets, and how you can up the intensity of your workouts. So if you didn't watch those two videos, go and watch those now, and then come back to this one. It's super important stuff, that stuff that you need to know. So recently, a lot of you guys have been requesting to see some of my workouts and the way that I do things. So that's what we're gonna look at today. We're gonna look at my entire beast mode upper body pull day. So 100%, I need you to understand that the reason I'm shooting this video is not to say that, oh, I'm cool, I can do muscle ups, or I have a good physique. No, that's not the reason I'm shooting this. The reason I'm shooting this is because I want you to see the things that I'm doing, and I want you to go and implement that into your own training. So looking at the supersets, looking at the circuits, looking at the single sets, looking at the rest times that I'm doing, looking at what I'm doing in between the sets, all this stuff I want you to take in, and I want you to apply that to your own training. So this is not for me to look cool. You know, I don't, uh, I don't care about that. I just want you to learn and I want you to apply this to your own training. If you're looking at me work and you're saying, what, there's no way I can do that. This video doesn't apply to me. It does because you can always just progress or regress the movement to your individual skill level. So I'm excited to make gains. I always get excited before I make gains. I hope you're excited to learn and it's gonna be good. So let's get to it. All right, gangsters. So first things first, we're always starting the workout with a good warm up and mobility. All the strength that we have, if it's knocked back by good mobility and flexibility is useless. So I use a PVC pipe and I do the exact same routine every single time. Between this and the reps that I get in, it takes me about 10-15 minutes just to warm up. You might think that's a lot, but it's your body we're talking about here. You want to start your car, then immediately burn out and go 90 miles per hour, so don't do that with your body. You want to make sure that you take care of it. If you want to know what I'm doing, I actually made an entire video on it, which I'll link above. Mobility and flexibility is neglected so much when it should be one of the main focuses of training. So if you haven't watched that video, make sure that you get back to it. It will help a lot. So after my mobility work, I do some light reps and sets just to get the blood flowing. This is nothing crazy challenging or difficult, it's just get my muscles primed and ready for movement. A lot of people completely skip any kind of warm up and one day sooner or later it's going to catch up to them. So warm up now and save yourself unnecessary time off and injury later. So for the final part of my warm up, I did some light scapula pulls to get my lats nice and warmed up for front lever training. These are great to do for any pulling, so muscle ups, pull ups, wide pull ups, scapula pulls are great to get you started. And when you do these, you don't have to pull as high as I am in this video. No matter what level you're at, just the act of you strictly turn you on and engage your lats is going to be work. And if you can't do pull-ups at all, this is a great place to start. Alright, so now we're getting into the good stuff. So, this workout fits perfectly into the previous video and the fact that it contains a single set, superset, and circuit. And I didn't even make this workout up just for the video, so it goes to show that each of these has their own place in any training program. And once you get them down and understand them, it's ultimate games. So I started out front lever training and single sets for a couple of reasons. First off, you always want to prioritize the most challenging movements or movements that you want to focus on first. I did muscle ups later on in this workout, but for me right now, front lever is more important. So while I'm fresh and still able to give 100%, I'm doing front lever work. If I was to prioritize muscle ups, those would get a lot stronger, but when I've come to do front lever training, I wouldn't nearly be as strong or effective. So in your programming, don't burn yourself out with an exercise, then go try to do an even harder one. Prioritize the most difficult exercise first. Another point to look at is why I'm choosing to do single sets versus supersets or circuits. So remember like we talked about, there's going to be a point in your training where the intensity is high enough and you're training certain movements that warrant that 5 minute rest. This is the time it takes for your body to recover enough to hit that set with 100% of our strength. So the goal here is pure strength. I want to be able to hold my body completely straight with both legs out. Right now, I'm only able to do this with one leg tucked for around 20 seconds. So if I didn't rest or only rested 2-3 minutes and tried to hit another set, I would probably last somewhere like 10 seconds or less, which isn't effective when I could have rested a little bit longer and held it for 20 seconds. So as you can see, it's all about training smart and being efficient. So here's some bonus gains for you guys. So after a single string set, we're not always going to feel like we did a whole lot and be extra out of breath and tired. We have 5 minutes to rest until the next set, so how do we spend that time? A lot of people do a lot of different things. They check Snapchat or Instagram and they go find their friends in the gym and talk their air off. So this is negative gains. This is the only type of gains that we don't want. If we have 5 minutes to rest, we should be doing something productive. What I spend my time doing is stretching. Just think about it. If you do 5 sets with a 5 minute rest in between, that's already 25 minutes of stretching that you've done while other people are just standing around doing nothing. So this is how you get gains, by putting in more work, being focused, and not messing around. Alright, so I had my single set and that was great, but now I'm going to start getting into the grindy, beast mode, multiple exercise strength sets. 
So my circuit here is five muscle ups, 10 straight bar dips, and 10 pull ups. So I'm doing all these exercises back to back with no rest in between and without letting go of the bar. Circuits are amazing of course for building endurance and strength, but also just for building that mental toughness. They're not easy and you're going all out for the duration of the set without stopping. So gains wise all around, circuits are fantastic and they're included in my training all the time. So this was set 2 out of 3. The first one I got all the reps, but the second one you see here that I didn't. So I shook it out and I finished. The reason I showed you this is because you always need to finish what you start. Don't ever let yourself get comfortable with quitting. Always, always, always push through and finish the set both for mental and physical gains. So after that intense set, we now have a 5 minute rest. Everybody is different, but I just spend the first 30 seconds trying to catch my breath and get eventually ready for the next one. Alright, so I have more bonus gains for you. Before your last and final set, grab your phone and find the hardest, loudest song that you can find. Alright, now you're ready. Alright, last set, here's the grind. Two more. <sighs> Grind, that's what it's all about. What if I forgot to press record? Alright, so to finish off, I did a set of typewriter pull-ups, superset with a 10 second isometric hold above the bar, and then I did some single set dragon flex. I want to get typewriter pull-ups as smooth as Frank Madrano's, but it's not a super high priority to me, so that's why I'm putting it very last in my workout. Bonus gains. If you can't do typewriter pull-ups, do archer pull-ups. These are a good regression and will help you build that unilateral strength necessary. Typewriters and archers are a good strength builder, and at this point, along with the isometric holds, I'm just doing it more to burn out and get that extra volume in work. Supersets of high string tagging exercises can really get you some solid work. At this point, my arms are pretty dead, but this was just a cherry on top of this game some Alright guys, I know you have some questions, so of course just leave them down below in the comments for me and I'll get to all of them. The main thing that I want you to get out of this is that you should be training hard, but smart and efficient. That's the most important thing. For those of you that are now 3 episodes deep in the How to Start Calisthenic videos, I really appreciate you and I'm glad you guys are open to learning. For those that are just now watching for the first time, make sure you watch the first two videos and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one. Make sure to like and subscribe, all that good stuff, and as always, have a gameful day.